He had been bad. He knew that. He had been bad and peed on her bed, and in the end there was nothing anybody could do about it. She had yelled at him that time, screaming terrible things in that way women do when you have broken their trust, trampled on their hearts, and urinated on their pillow. Bad dog, she said. He remembered it now. Bad dog. And he was a bad dog. A bad old dog with a cranky disposition and a weak bladder. It was at times like this that he feared life had no meaning. What was life anyway but lying around on one's blankie waiting for the next bowl of kibble? Life was nothing. Nada. Nada y nada y pues nada. Woof nada. Then she came along and gave him a treat and for a brief time life was good. Then he puked the treat on the rug and life was bad again. At times he would strike out in frustration. How vividly he recalled the day he bit a man, drawing blood as he had so many times before. He had been sitting in Harry's bar on a hot August afternoon when the strange man approached. Go, said the man, go fetch. The man had tossed a tennis ball across the tile floor. It was an old tennis ball in yellow, and he remembered liking the way the lights from the bar reflected off the ball's fuzzy skin. So he had chased the ball, and the ball offered no resistance as he put it in his mouth. Then the man wanted the ball back, so he had bit him. He had earned the ball. It belonged to him. He knew it, and the people in the bar knew it, and the ball knew it, and now the man with the bloody hand knew it too. Yes, he was a bad dog, but one could blame his poor health for his surly disposition. There was the ear trouble in August. She had taken him to the vet that time, just as she had on so many other occasions. She took him to the vet, and the vet had performed surgery, and he had spent the next couple of weeks walking around with a cone on his head. It was a large white cone, and plastic, and when people saw him, they laughed. They laughed at him and they laughed at the cone, and there was nothing he could do about it. Life was bad. Now it is Christmas time. He will try not to eat an ornament off the tree and land in the emergency room as he had done with such reckless abandon the previous year. He will try, but the ornaments are very tasty and time is very short. It is Christmas time and he has already consumed half a red candlestick from the candelabra she had sitting by the fireplace. Life is good.